Hare Krishna. Question, how can we overcome loneliness? Answer, loneliness can be dealt with at a social, psychological and spiritual levels. At a social level, we all have different dynamics in our relationships with different people depending on <coughs> the different natures that people may have depending on the specific kind of interactions we have had with different people and depending on the specific uh, <coughs> busyness level of different people at different times now loneliness it <coughs> Yeah, the simplest way at which we deal with loneliness is by developing connections you know by finding like-minded people and developing relationships with them now there is the problem that often we interact with a lot of people and we interact with them superficially so we have to uh, whatever interactions we have whatever relationships we have <coughs> we need to shortlist some people with whom we would like to develop more relationships the loneliness is more a state of the mind and it doesn't depend so much on how many people with which we are interacting at a practical level people can be in crowded cities people can be in a crowded local where they are squeezed together with others and still the heart can be lonely so, so we have to see that first of all loneliness is more a state of the mind but that it is a state of the mind does not mean that it has to be dealt with only at the emotional or mental level or psychological level that what it means is that we have to also look at the social the emotional and the spiritual causes of that state of the mind so at the first level for dealing with the state of the mind we can see who are all the people with whom we are interacting uh, in our day to day lives and check who are the people among them with whom we can make our relationships deeper with whom we can connect at a stronger level at a deeper level at a more uh, meaningful and fulfilling level and after we shortlist some people now uh, this shortlisting how to do that uh, I'll talk a little bit more when we talk about dealing with loneliness at a psychological level but it generally doesn't have to be just on <coughs> peer pressure or social <coughs> evaluations of who we should be mixing with or uh, there are certain people who are glamorized in any social group and <coughs> everyone wants the pride of association with that person so now pride of proximity with that person oh I know so and so I know so and so so now that sort of thing <coughs> if we base our relationships largely on <coughs> on those who are considered very important or glamorous or very valued in a particular social circle then we may or may not get that expectation fulfilled because different people have different natures, different people have different business levels so we have to be realistic in looking at okay these are the people with whom I want to develop a relationship and then we can see what are the practical steps that we can do for developing that relationship and <clears throat> as we shortlist this will be a this will not be a static process it will be a dynamic process wherein we will find that sometimes we have greater opportunity to connect with some people sometimes we have lesser opportunity to connect with some people but overall we can move onwards in our connection with uh, uh, by overall uh, um, having a list having a short list of people with whom we want to have closer relationship and then investing time in that relationship so um, often if we have too much expectation from a relationship then that expectation itself creates a feeling of rejection or negligence and that can create a feeling of loneliness so instead of seeing relationships primarily are centered on what we expect 
we can see relationships also as an opportunity to contribute and <clears throat> that means building relationships is like is like gardening and not just gardening in general but gardening like making orchards where we are building plantations or where we are actually <clears throat> growing fruit trees say then sometimes they take years to fructify so if we if a person who is gardening has too much expectations and too much expectations initially itself then that can create a lot of <coughs> disappointment and uh, then thereby resulting in loneliness so if we shift that focus from expectation to contribution in the relationship okay what can i do in what can i bring into this relationship then that way we will always have something to do and we won't feel so lonely now <coughs> so so shortlisting the num people with whom we want to have closer relationships and then working intelligently to make that relationship closer that's what we can do at a social level then at a psychological or emotional or mental level we need to look at our own nature and some people are introvert some people are extrovert it's a broad uh, character division and <clears throat> the important point is that we shouldn't assume that we are lonely because others think call us as a loner it may well be that yes introverts it's, they they get strength when they are alone they need to have their own space and time in which uh, they can think clearly they can recoup regroup and then they can move onwards doing things so similarly we also need to check things out and move onwards by focusing on by dwelling on uh, what our nature is and not letting others perception of us determine our own conception of ourselves that means because others say oh this person always stays alone so therefore this person is a loner and this person must be lonely and this person must have relation must develop poor relationships no if we are introverts then and if we are satisfied if we are peaceful in being alone we don't have to artificially unnaturally put pressure on ourselves to connect more with people the important point is we have to say which is the state of which is the uh, situation for us in which we can function best so intro it is not that introvert people dislike others it is just that they uh, can deal with their their social stamina is limited and they can deal with people uh, in small manageable divisions you know few people with intervals in between them so we largely live in a extrovert society especially a society that glamorizes the extrovert achiever the idea that a person as soon as the person enters the room every all heads turn towards that person and every and this person behaves in a way acts and talks and walks in a way that dazzles and captivates everyone so often a person's value and success is evaluated based on how much uh, uh, that person can attract others to oneself and we and especially this sort of if in those with the introvert nature take that definition as their own definition of success then they will always feel lonely sick rejected insecure inferior <clears throat> so we don't have to do that if we are comfortable being <clears throat> being to ourselves and we need time to regroup for ourselves then we can take that and not let others perceptions or others uh, expectations determine our own conception of ourselves so at a psychological level we need to understand our nature and then we need to understand what kind of relationships do we need often extrovert people they need to interact with a lot of people and even if those interactions are not very deep that doesn't matter so much for them they need to interact with a lot of people whereas introvert people they can interact with few people but they need to inter they can go deep in that interaction and in that way the the <coughs> we can by understanding our nature we can take steps for overcoming our feelings of loneliness so sometimes 
we may not be feeling lonely but just because others call us a loner we may think oh i am lonely i am lonely no we may well be satisfied in our relationship with others uh, with whatever state we are in our relationships so understand your know thyself as it is said so that applies not only to understanding ourselves as souls it also applies to understanding our own nature and acting accordingly then after that we can also we need to ultimately look at relationships and the challenge of overcoming loneliness at a spiritual level ultimately ekastu the bhagavatam says that we are all alone in our journey we may have families we may have friends we may have a social circle at the same time we also need to recognize that <coughs> Uh, we are ultimately alone. Ashla Prabhupada says that we all have to fly our own plane, and so recognizing our existential loneliness is ex uh -huh, is foundational for uh -huh, taking responsibility for our own lives, materially and spiritually. So spiritually, as souls, uh, we are alone. that means whatever relationships we have with others those relationships are not uh, um, not uh, uh, are not going to be eternal and they are not necessarily uh, at a um, level of who we are at the level of souls so at the level of the soul the soul's longing eternally is for krishna uh, all feelings of loneliness ultimately stem from the soul's longing for krishna and to the extent we can learn to relate with krishna we can develop our relationship with krishna to that extent we can overcome the feelings of loneliness in the in in the most deep and most fulfilling way so we have to uh, at a spiritual level in the various limbs of bhakti we can find out which are the ways in which we can feel the presence of krishna the most we can feel the uh, the greatest connection with krishna for some devotees it may be in some devotees it may be in scripture study for others it may be in verse recitation for others it may be in deity worship for others it may be in uh, hearing classes whatever uh, and of course through all of these we can feel the presence of krishna at different times but uh, but each of us will find that in in one of these activities we may feel the strongest and the deepest connection and often the most easily accessible connection in one of these activities and so we can whenever we start feeling lonely we can start connecting with krishna through these activities and uh, through that particular devotional activity and deal with the or uh, challenge of loneliness at the deepest level so <clears throat> apart from that now the spiritual connection with krishna is the ultimate solution but it may not always be the immediate solution and it is not also the substitute for the immediate so <clears throat> that means that if a person is feeling lonely we should not think that i don't need any relationships i will just have a relationship with krishna and i'll be satisfied in that relationship quite often that doesn't work now our relationship our ultimate our ultimate relationship with krishna uh, which is our which we could say is our vertical relationship and that is not a replacement but it is a complement for our horizontal relationships so our horizontal relationships with others they become more meaningful and they become more fulfilling when we also have a vertical relationship with krishna but uh, <clears throat> so when i talked about the uh, dealing with loneliness at a social and psychological level it was largely with respect to the horizontal relationships and with the vertical relationship we can focus on developing our own devotional connection with krishna and seek shelter in that connection and thus strengthen the vertical relationship also now why developing this vertical and horizontal relationship uh, we can uh, the spiritual conception the spiritual understanding of life the devotional vision of life can also help us uh, help us in our social in the social and the emotional or psychological aspects of overcoming loneliness 
and <coughs> so how does that happen at a social level you know bhak the bhakti vision helps us to see others not just in terms of their relationship with us but also in terms of their relationship with krishna so in every relationship krishna becomes a third partner for us and this helps us to act not just in terms only of how that person is acting we can also see in terms of how i can act in the situation by which krishna will be pleased that means even if if some person is going through some difficulty and if some person if that person or that person is uh, neglected or rejected us and that is causing us loneliness then praying for that person for that that person's well being praying for that person's if that person has committed a mistake as disappointed or betrayed us in a relationship now we may feel very far away from from a uh, praying for that person but we can pray for that person not just for that person's good but for our own good also because praying for that person is not only um, going to help that person it is going to help us also how because prayer when we pray to other pray for others so it's not only krishna's blessings coming to that person but it's also because we are praying to krishna we are connecting with krishna and that itself can lift us up so also the in in relationships we all often experience uh, conflicts and stress and uh, tension because we all have our rough side and others have their rough side also so praying can uh, praying that we be able to control our impulses we be praying that we are be able to deal with our own negativities and others be able to deal with their own negativities that can bring uh, take the relationship to a higher reciprocal rather than vindictive level that vindictive means oh you did this i'll do that to you and i and i did that so that person will do something to us but more of a reciprocal spiritual reciprocal level, level where rather than we blaming each other we help each other according to whatever we are our capacities and also at a psychological level we can understand that we are all related uh, whatever nature we have right now our relationship with our mind and body they are temporary uh, but the but that connection is important for us so even if sometimes some people are introvert and they long to be extrovert some people are extrovert and they uh, this may be a little few because of the social glamorization of the extrovert person but the other extrovert long to be introverts and like there are psychological level no uh, we may have a particular set of talents and we may be attracted and want to have a relationship with someone who just doesn't have interest in the kind of talents that we have in the nature that we have and then that creates uh, a frustrated uh, that create that frustrates our expectations so by recognizing that whatever is our nature whatever is our present situation that is an arrangement by god by krishna for our growth and <clears throat> by accepting it in that way accepting our nature seeing that nature as a arrangement for our growth we can deal with the situation accept it and act in a way in which we can best move onwards so sharanagati surrender to krishna also means anukulyasya sankalpa pratikulyasya varjanam that means accepting that which is favorable rejecting that which is unfavorable so whatever is our nature we accept it and we move onwards and whatever is unfavorable and negativity discouragement <clears throat> all that comes and discourages in our life we reject that and in that way at a social level at a emotional level and a spiritual level we can uh, overcome the feelings of loneliness thank you rex